What's up? My name's John with Blackberry Productions and welcome back to another video. Today we're actually talking about 10 tips that you can utilize as a new 2024 Tesla Model 3 Performance owner. The last video I did regarding five tips that you can utilize as a new 2024 Tesla Model 3 Performance owner did pretty well. So I thought I'd make a follow-up video. So think of this video as a sequel to that video and I'll leave a card somewhere above here so that way you can check out my last video. So. Without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so first thing is easy entry. And I thought this mode was a little confusing when I first set it up, but it's actually pretty easy. Essentially what you do is you create a driver's profile like you normally would, uh, and then you can actually link a easy entry profile to that driver's profile. And what I'm finding is those settings that you actually set in your easy mode are actually completely separate from your main driver's profile. So Think of easy entry mode is just a way of getting in and out of the car easier. I'll say for the performance model, just because the seat bolstering is a little bit more aggressive on this model and you'll have to climb over the seat to get out of the car anyway. So it's not like you can just slide right across like most other cars out of the car. Um, but with this one, it, I mean, it's just, it's just too aggressive for that. But the option is there if you wanna give it a try. Second tip is around your off-peak charging. So Tesla allows you to actually schedule charging times. And I know some electricity providers actually offer cheaper electricity per wattage during certain times of the evening. So Tesla actually allows you to schedule your charging through both the app and on the car itself. So you can set up a, uh, an entire schedule based on when you want to charge and take advantage of those savings when it comes to electricity. I personally don't do this because I need to have the, the full amount of the day to charge my car because I'm using level one charging on my car. So, but if you have a level two charger, I highly recommend checking this out. All right, third tip. This aligns around your door jams. And if you don't know, on the new performance model, I'm not sure if this is on any other 2024 Tesla model, but this model, it actually has like a little latch uh, attached to the door that goes into a hole that's in the door jam. And this is on every door. So my third tip is to just try to keep this area clean because I can only imagine if for whatever reason, a, um, a chunk of mud or a rock or something like that gets lodged in that hole and then you go, go in and slam the door. I feel like that could significantly damage that latch because it is just a small little latch. And it's actually one of the concerns that I had before I purchased this car because I wasn't sure how long that little mechanism would last. It seems to be welded pretty well um, so I'll definitely be keeping an eye on it as I'm owning this car, um, but it's still a failure point that's worth considering when you're purchasing this car. So that is my third tip. My fourth tip is around limiting the music sources in your car. So for me, since I only use my Bluetooth for music, I only have Bluetooth checked and I think you have to have one other thing mandatory check and I think that's the radio I have in my car. I'll throw up a clip uh, so you can see on how you can access this. But uh, my thought is, if you're not using any of the other music sources, why have the option there in the first place? It just clutters things. So I wanted uh, somewhat of a minimal experience. Just sort of embracing that minimalist design that Tesla offers in their cars. Create a guest profile. I think this actually should come as a default with these cars, just because people play around with the settings a lot, especially if it's not your car. Um, but the short of it is just make sure that uh, when you're setting up your driver's profile, you set up an additional guest profile. So that way, if there's someone that isn't familiar with the car, drives it, or maybe you're taking it to a service center or something like that, you can quickly switch the guest and that will preserve your personal driver profile settings. Next, consider coverage for your tires. Um, you heard me talk about this in my last video, and I think I might have talked about it in my previous video as well. But I can't stress this enough. Tires for this car is very expensive. Um, I paid over $500 for a tire replacement just from a single nail uh, because it was on the sidewall and it was unable to be patched. So when you're shopping for insurance for this car, make sure that your insurance offers some sort of roadside hazard insurance. And if they don't, 
then you should definitely start looking into third-party insurance options uh, for, for that specific coverage. For me, I heard Discount Tire offers OEM coverage for tires. Um, so that's the first one I'm gonna look into. And I haven't had a chance to look into them lately just because I've been busy, but I'm definitely gonna see if I can get out there this week and, and report back if I find any additional information to share with you guys. Next thing is you should definitely consider limiting the sentry mode usage in your Tesla. If you don't know, sentry mode is a mode that allows you to monitor the car. Um, and if you have premium, you, you could actually monitor what's going on inside and outside the car remotely from your phone. Um, if you don't have premium, what sentry mode does is it actually just records clips around your car and inside your car. So when the car detects someone that, that for example, walks up to the car uh, close enough in proximity, then it'll start recording. And you can view that recording when you come back to the car. Sentry mode drains your battery, especially if you have it on for a long time. So I typically try to only limit sentry mode usage when I'm in like a public area that I'm unfamiliar with or a rather shady area that is known for carjackings or anything like that. So those are the use cases that I use sentry mode for. So the next thing you should definitely consider doing is setting a passcode for drive and your glove box. If you don't know, and I'm not sure if it's exclusive to this model year or not, but I thought this was pretty cool. Essentially what you can do is you could set a passcode um, to effectively drive the vehicle. So to shift it into drive, it'll ask you for a passcode. Same thing goes for the glove box. So setting up something like this is definitely a cool thing and it adds an extra level of security to an already pretty secure car, you know, with like the sentry mode cameras and all that fun stuff. Next thing is the charging port. And I don't see a lot of YouTubers talk about this specific thing I'm about to talk about but it's something that I didn't know on my first couple of days owning this car. But essentially, when you're opening and closing the charge port, definitely don't force it um, because Tesla says that it'll actually damage the hinge, uh, the hinge mechanism that allows it to open and close on its own. So instead, what you do is you either close it and open it using the app, or what you can do is just wait for a little while and it'll close by itself. Another thing to consider is obviously when you're using a at-home charger, then there's like a little button on the charger that allows you to open it and that's how you can get into the charge port. But definitely don't forcibly close it. Um, in fact, I did it a couple times and it just didn't feel right. Um, it didn't feel smooth at all um, and I kind of immediately felt that I was doing something wrong but I didn't know I was doing something wrong until I started looking through the Tesla manuals provided in the car's touchscreen. So definitely be on the lookout for that. Last thing is around the Tesla app. And if you don't know, just a quick little tip, you could actually customize the buttons. Um, if you have an iPhone like I do and you use the widget, you can rearrange those buttons in a way that's more preferable to what you want to see. So that is the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this informative, Feel free to leave a quick like and also consider subscribing. I make two Tesla videos per week um, and I try to put out a car review every month. Uh, I actually started with my own Model 3 performance last month as the first car review and I have a couple of car reviews lined up for the next couple months. So if you like that review or if you're just passing by, I highly recommend checking it out. I'll leave a card above this video so you can check it out. So with that, this has been John with Blackbird Productions, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.